Hey everyone, it's Laser back from QuakeCon, which was a blast. I'll be doing a video talking about my experience there in a little bit. Uh, just kind of tired from travel and there was a lot going on. So today, instead of going over that, what we are going to talk about is the monthly card for the month of July. Now remember, you can check all of the info on how to get this card in the link that'll be in the description, but the basic premise is you get a number of copies based on hitting certain ranks for the season, and if you get top 1000 legend, then you get three premium copies. And for this month, the card that we are looking at is... Sentinel Reclaimer. It is a 3 Magicka 2-3 a in Intelligence, it has Summon put a steel dagger and a steel sword into your hand. Steel dagger, for anyone who doesn't know, is a one magicka equipment that gives plus one plus oh, and the steel sword is a two magicka equipment that gives plus three plus zero. So obvious first inclusion in this is in all of your item decks. Things like the arcane enchanter, which gives items to your uh, keywords to your items that is as they're put into your hand means when this comes down you automatically get uh, two items with a random keyword each more arcane enchanters then you get more keywords and you see where i'm going with this i think that could be definitely fun i don't know if this is necessarily the card that those decks need in order to make them you know really really truly viable but i mean it'll be fun at the very least item decks are already a really fun archetype to delve into and if you want to slot that in i don't think anyone would fault you for that item sorcerer already has some pretty good three drops with things like young mammoth and haunting spirit if you want to take that more mid-rangey approach uh, i think battle mage might be okay with this because you can you know get a lot of random generation of items with things like plunder and battle mages onslaught if you want to go down the more kind of casino roulette style of deck which is really really silly and can lead to some really fun highlight moments but i think somewhere this could fit in really really well is in a very reach heavy aggro assassin back in the day charmer fantastic youtuber was on the desk with me at QuakeCon. Did something that he called long arm assassin basically that was an aggressive sorcerer uh, assassin deck rather that had an absurd amount of ways to deal direct damage to your opponent to close out the game things like the black hand messenger being able to kill itself to do two damage for three magicka was pretty nice had bolts had cliff racers had encano lots and lots of ways to deal direct damage and I think Sentinel Reclaimer fits in relatively well in that kind of deck. Uh, it has four points worth of reach built into this, which is you know really, really nice. You play Dawnbreaker already in your aggressive yellow decks, mostly so you can have those plus four, plus four stats. And only giving attack is definitely relevant because, Sentinel Reclaimer, that is, because it means you can only deal extra damage, doesn't give you more survivability. But in the aggressive... Assassin decks, that's probably fine. You'll have things like Shadow Shift to instead of trade over guards, you can move around them. And then you can have really nice ways to finish out the game like we were talking about before with Assassin's really, really nice reach already. Some of the downsides of this card are that it's really a, a pretty slow tempo card. A 3 Magicka 2-3 that doesn't affect the board right away is okay at best because it doesn't really help you fight for the board unless you already have the magicka to use one of the items that it gives you and even that requires you to have a creature on board that can carry it so it definitely is a little bit rough just as a three drop that you're wanting to put into your curve this is definitely not a card that you can put into like mid-range sorcerer that cares a lot about using all of its magicka every turn very very efficiently and very effectively Lastly, another place this can go is in things like Token Mage. Token Mage is a deck that had a lot of success in the past and has been kind of looked over recently. I think that um, part of that is because it has good ways to trick combat with things like Gavel and Cloud Rest, but it, it misses out on a lot of the direct damage that Aggressive Battle Mage and Aggressive Assassin can have. I think this kind of helps that issue. I'm not sure if it's enough, but it's definitely possible. And I think given that yellow has really nice combat tricks already, being able to utilize the extra damage that this card can give might really be really nice. You can already trade in effectively if you can gavel over something. And now after you've gotten those nice value trades, you get a payoff by getting a lot more damage done to the face. Thanks to Sinal Reclaimer's body, which is okay, but mostly thanks to the items. 
The last thing that this can do really, really well is smooth out your curve. There are a lot of decks that end up having very powerful plays, but can have clunky hands. For example, I don't think this card belongs in this, but I think Midrange Battle Mage is one that is a deck that kind of fits that description. You can kind of draw the wrong half of your deck sometimes, and you have clunky mana costs that don't really add up to having anything to do. Sentinel Reclaimer, being a 3-drop, gives you a 1-drop and a 2-drop, means that you have a lot of ways to make sure that you at least have something to do each turn that can be a little bit helpful. Giving something more power is very rarely a bad thing, and you have to play around your opponent's removal, of course, but assuming you're just, you know, playing an honest board control kind of game, then this can be something that can really help out. Make sure that you have something to do for as many turns as you can have happen. One of the kind of unfortunate parts about that, though, is that the three drop slot for blue is relatively well contested already. The new Discerning Thief, the 3 4 Khajiit that lets you rummage through your cards, Daggerfall Mage, and Cunning Ally, if you have a deck that can support it, are all pretty good 3 drops already. The reason I think it's good in Assassin is that Green's 3s are kind of just okay. Brotherhood Slayer is pretty alright, but for the most part Green's 3s are sort of eh. So if you're looking to curve out a little smoother, then putting this into an aggressive Assassin I think would be at least worth testing out. So let me know what you think about this card, where you think you'll be wanting to put it, and what you think it can really contribute to. Is this card garbage? Is this card great? I don't know. We'll find out pretty soon. But until then, I am Lazergician. Go ahead and like and subscribe if you want to keep seeing more content from me. We'll be doing monthly reviews from now on. That's something I've been wanting to do for a while, but I've been packing and moving. So now that I'm actually set up and stable, that's something we can do. So yeah, uh, happy about that. And we'll see what we have coming up soon. Um, definitely going to do a QuakeCon breakdown, you know, how everything went by the scenes and some, you know, photos and videos and stuff that I took. So it'll be fun. So yeah, if you want to see that, make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, comment with what you think this card is like. I think it's fun. I don't know if it's going to be, you know, meta warping, but it's definitely something that I'm going to give a shot. So yeah, thanks for watching and we will see you guys next time.